Assalamu alaikum. So today we're going to be taking a look at Surah Al-Nasr. Now this surah is considered to be the last complete surah to be revealed. The Prophet was very concerned and worried about the message of Islam and people not accepting the message. Um, and this surah um, basically tells him that they are going to be victorious and conquer Mecca and that he with his own eyes will see floods and floods of people joining Islam. Now when this surah came down, the companions and were so happy because it's such a pleasing scene and such happy news for them to know that soon they will be back in Mecca, things will be good and peaceful and lots of people would accept the religion. But there was one person, Abu Bakr anhu, when this surah came down and he heard it, he started crying uncontrollably. Now why is that? He understood a deeper meaning behind the surah. He understood that this meant that the Prophet was going to fulfill his mission soon and therefore there would be no reason um, for him to stay in this world and therefore he would be leaving them soon. So that's why he cried uncontrollably when he heard the surah. So let's take a look at the first ayah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح. The first ayah starts off with the word إذا. Now إذا in Arabic means when, but sometimes we say إذ and sometimes we say إذا. In general, إذ is used for past tense, so it's when but for past tense, and إذا is used for future tense. What does this mean? In English, we do the same thing. For example, in past tense, I might say. Uh, when I saw you, I was happy. This is past tense, using when in past tense. Future tense, uh, maybe when I, when I get there, I will text you. So when is used in the future tense. So in this case, إذا is used, meaning it's coming in the future. This victory of Allah is coming. So إذا جاء نصر الله الفتح When the victory and conquest of Allah comes. Now the word for comes used here is جاء in Arabic, we have two main words that we use, and we see them throughout the Quran. We have ja'a and we have ata. Ja'a is a stronger, more powerful word used for come. So, for example, um, we have in Surah Abbas, فَإِذَا جَاءَتَ الصَّاخَ When there comes the deafening blast at the end of times. So here, ja'a is used because it's a much more powerful uh, thing coming. And ata is used for easier situations, um, not that difficult. Um, so in this ayah, ja'a is used. It's a powerful coming of the victory and conquest. Why is it powerful? Because it's coming after years and years and years of struggles and punishment and torture and a lot of things that the Muslims went through. So now finally this is coming and it's such a powerful victory that is coming uh, to them. The next word, nasr. Now there's different words um, that mean help or assistance and various ones are used throughout the Quran. Nasr, each one of them has a specific meaning. Nasr means help but help against something. So if someone is oppressing you um, and then you're getting help against that person, this is Nasr. So to be victorious against and get assistance over something or someone else. So this Nasr is coming um, against the people that were opposing um, Islam. And then it doesn't just say Nasr, it says Nasrullah. So the victory of Allah, associating it with Allah, reminding us how powerful this victory is and also reminding us that this victory is only possible with the help and assistance of Allah. So it's an incomparable type of assistance and victory. And then well, fatih, the last word fatih, and the conquest, or and the opening, it directly means. Um, or can be used for the conquest of a place. Um, and so it was um, understood that this meant the conquest of Mecca. Um, now this was a very unique conquest because, so the Prophet was able to gather, it is said, about 10,000 people. And they came, um, they came, all 10,000, to Mecca and the Prophet's desire was to have no bloodshed. So when they entered, they even announced to people that we don't want bloodshed, um, just stay in your homes and you will be safe. Um, and that's how they conquered Mecca. So it was, it's a very unique conqueror, conquest 
where there was no bloodshed. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا وَرَأَيْتَ and you saw this is in a singular talking to one person talking directly to the Prophet ﷺ letting him know and you will see floods and floods of people entering the religion you yourself will get to witness this moment don't worry you're concerned about the people not believing um, the religion, not accepting the religion, but you yourself will get to see floods and floods of people entering this religion. And so what happened? When the Prophet وسلم, um, conquered Mecca, the news spread everywhere. And so a lot of the Arabs throughout the Arabian Peninsula um, started saying, if this man was able to conquer Mecca, then he must be a prophet. And so people um, traveled from all over to come and listen to the message of Islam. And so they came as delegations or representatives um, to listen to the message and then take it back to their people. Um, and then basically the groups and groups of people started accepting Islam this way. And because so many delegations came forward, this year was called Amal Wufud, the year of delegations, because of delegation after that. It is said that there was no day where there wasn't a new delegation uh, coming to accept Islam and then take it back to their people. Um, and so people accepted Islam in groups and groups. Before this, people were only accepting Islam as individuals, as one or two people at a time. But now it became tens and hundreds of people at a time. There's said to be one group that were 700 people and they all accepted at the same time, all 700 of them. And so um, that's what afwaja means. Afwaja means group after group after group. And the word uh, used is yadkhuluna. They enter in the religion of Allah. Not they, not yu'minun. Um, the word iman is not used. It just says that they enter into the religion of Allah. Now this is important because that's a different level, just accepting Islam and the way these people accepted Islam, it wasn't necessarily in their hearts yet, right? So a huge group is accepting it, so the group is like, okay, everyone's doing it, I'm going to accept it. It's not necessarily in their hearts. So the word yadkhununa is used. So there's a beauty in the types of words that are chosen to describe. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Okay, now this final ayah is telling us how we should respond to a success. So if something great happens, if we have a big win, um, success comes our way, what could happen? Pride, self-conceit might start to play a part. But Allah here is reminding us that every success comes from Him, so we have to immediately turn to Him, thank Him, praise Him, glorify Him, um, and remember that it comes from Him. So don't let the pride take over when you have a success. And the order is interesting. He says, Sabbih bihamdi rabbika wastaghfiru. So he says, Tasbih first, and then hamd is mentioned, and then istighfar is mentioned. So exalting him with the praise, and then seeking istighfar or seeking forgiveness. And it's interesting the order that it's placed. So first, we give Allah what he wants. We give him something and then we ask him for something. So we give and then we ask for forgiveness. So the order is important. So there's a lesson within this. Another interesting thing is that the ayah ends with saying إِنَّهُ كَانَ tawaba. So he is tawaba, the one who accepts repentance. Now he didn't say وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا He didn't say make istighfar for he's the one that accepts your istighfar. Um, or he didn't say فَتُوبُوا إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّى But he didn't say make tawbah because he is tawab. He used the word istighfar and then described himself as tawab. Tawab is an interesting word. What does this mean? Tawab is somebody who returns to you more than you return to them. And this is really interesting. So, meaning that Allah is the one that performs tawbah more than we perform tawbah. What does this mean? For example, if we look at the story of Adam alayhi salam, who is the one that performed an act of tawbah first? It was Allah. The ayah says, تَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِ So Allah sent words to Adam 
in the form of forgiving him. And then Allah, and then Adam turned to Allah and asked him for forgiveness. And then Allah accepted his ask for forgiveness. So who did more actions? Allah did two actions, Adam just did one. So who is the one that returns and performs the to action of Tawbah more? It is Allah. So even before we ask for Tawbah, He performs Tawbah. He forgives us so that we turn to Him and ask for forgiveness, so that He can accept it. So He does more work. Hopefully that made sense. So that brings us to the end of the surah. And um, there's several lessons here in this surah. Lessons include do not be deluded by your successes. Always remember that successes come from Allah. So always turn to him and be grateful and thank him when you do have a success. Um, don't brag and boast about successes. Um, have patience. Some struggles take long. The Prophet and his companions struggled for years and years and years and years before this victory came. Uh, so some things take time, but have patience and always have faith and trust that Allah is there and that uh, we should always turn to him and that he is able to bring you out of any difficulty that uh, you are in. Um, so that brings us to the end of the surah and hope this was beneficial.